Let's take a look everyone, how can we enter a function into Femap? I have this function given and here's its uh, yeah, the function and I want to enter this into Femap. We see that we have an exponential, something to the power, cosine, pi, uh, we have the variable, okay, so it's quite a few uh, things that we need to enter and let's see how can we enter this into Femap. So what we can do, go here on the left side, functions, right click and new and this window will appear. You can define, call it something, big F, uh, dimensionless, like this is versus time. This is, there's several different fonts that you can define, but mine is uh, some kind of value versus time, right? So I'm gonna pick this, dot 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 versus time, there you go, and click right here, equation. Okay, and there you have it. Now, you can uh, start entering in your uh, functions. Let's see if I'm gonna go from 0 to 1. I'm gonna be sine, uh, let's see, 180. Make sure, so this would be a pi, right? So don't enter in pi or any kind of radian values. It needs it in degrees. So let's say 180 and times let's say theta t whatever the variable but for us the variable is x this is the x uh, axis and since this is a major uh, axis for the software we can just put in x we need to make remember to make sure we put in exclamation point x okay there you go and then you can add it there you go we got something and if let's say this would be uh, go to, uh, you don't like it, the reset, get rid of it, 1, 2, let's say 10, and let's see, it's in a, there you go, see, this is a sine function, no, this is, looks horrible, I want it more detailed, you can come here, reset, come here, and put 0 0.01, much more detailed, let's go back, 10, and add, there you go, much nicer, right, so, let, let me, go to library, you can save, I already saved the one that I showed earlier, and there you go, see, this is the one that it will, uh, we will create, so, uh, where is it, right here, so we need a whole bunch of stuff entered, which is not this one, we can reset, get rid of all of that, and now let's start to enter this in manually. A quick note, if you want to know how, what functions, uh, where are they and what they mean and the details, go up to here, help, SimCenter Nastran, and here you will go to a website that will allow you to see all kind of details, but the PDFs and everything that can teach you what's what, and if you download the user guide, uh, FEMAP user guide, go to the function reference section, okay, and here you can read a bunch more in detail and everything that will explain you, like here's the exponential function that we're gonna be using, uh, let's see what else, where's the power, the power raising something to the power of whatever, right, this is what we're gonna be using, and other ones, sine, cosine, and that kind of stuff, okay, so check this out. So come down here where the Y area is, click in there and press Ctrl E on your keyboard and then this window will open the equation editor. Here we can see all kind of functions that we can uh, select from and it will help us enter in our equation. So I have a, an exponential function, I'm gonna start with E, E, something, then that something again on the power of something, then multiplied by a cosine. Okay, let's do that. So, for, uh, to, to, to put uh, the exponential, where is exponential, right here, exponential, insert function, you can leave that in there. Now, we have something inside that, so we have um, uh, negative 0 0.5 times another something. I like to separate and put things in nice parentheses 
which uh, will help us avoid any kind of problems. Now we have to enter in a variable. So we can either do it by hand or come up here and click on this one, insert variable, and then it will enter it with the exclamation point, knowing that, that the, you know, in case you forget it, he won't. So that one minus 0 0.4. need another parenthesis though, looks like. Yeah, there you go. Four, there you go. Divided by 0 0.1. And now outside of that, I need to... So I can't really just uh, do this to the power of 2. That will not work. So what I can do we need to get rid of that and actually all of this stuff this part right here that I entered needs to be entered into the power function come on, get it there you go it, this one, which is the power so I copy and pasted it I mean just copied it, cut it out and click the power button and you can see there's two areas the first one you're gonna paste in uh, or write in the thing that you want to raise to some power and after the semicolon you put the power that you want to raise it to for me that's a two okay and I believe that would be all my exponential now times I'm gonna pick the cosine now cosine now I have a 2 pi here again make sure that you do not enter in pi or uh, 3.14 or anything we need degrees so that's 180 and I have times 5 no 5.4 uh, times parentheses I have another variable so click on this one again insert minus 0 0.4 and da, 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 da. we need to close that one and there you go that should be it maybe let's copy it in case we do some mistake and uh, lose it okay now it comes here uh, my chart goes from uh, 0 to 0 0.8 so I'm gonna put here 0, 0 0.8 and here I'm gonna break it up into smaller pieces and maybe even smaller 0 0.01 and add it and there you have it nicely entered and one extra thing make sure you notice that if you want uh, your function to uh, continue on zero you kinda need to enter another piece of information for the software to know because it will take the last information you entered and it will do go like, extrapolate from these and continue that and since uh, as you can tell we don't really exactly have a zero right here right so it will not continue a zero so to make sure that we have a zero so starting from x 0 0.8 to I don't know whatever let's say one make sure that we're gonna have instead of this one replace it out replace this guy out with a zero and add that to it I see here and then zero okay there you have it that's how you enter a complicated function and now we can go actually and save it to library I already saved it so I'm not gonna save it again but you got the idea good and I'm gonna call this big F oh we lost this one there you go versus time and there you go you can click OK cancel this out and now it's here and so how do we use it so for me I'm gonna use this as an acceleration function so right now this is just a function right not defined as what is it so what I can do is I'm gonna use it as a load nodal and I'm gonna apply it to the landing gear okay and I'm gonna call it big A and it here is where I tell the software what is this function for is it a force a velocity an acceleration for me it's acceleration it's gonna be 
in the z direction so I'm gonna put uh, 9.81 multiply it by 9.81 because uh, see my function it goes from 0 to 1 but 1 g g is uh, 1 g 1, gra 1 times gravity so 9.81 and here we select the function that we just defined, the f. I called it an f function, right? So there you go. And OK, that's it. And now if you even zoom in, you can see the symbol for the acceleration function. There you have it, see? Good. And if you, uh, well, it's not part of this video, but remind. let me remind you that when you uh, apply a predetermined load like an acceleration for uh, for uh, displacement velocity you also need to make sure your you uh, apply a constraint to the direction of uh, the motion that you are enforcing so here we did an uh, in the z direction we enforced an acceleration so we need to constrain that direction as well. I know it can be counterintuitive but that's how the software works. L and we could just go with this one the Z direction because that's the direction we have uh, our acceleration enforced in but uh, I'm just gonna do all of it so we don't have accidental pivoting or anything like that. Okay. Oh, I already set that up, so there you go. He's just telling me that don't do it again. So I forgot that I already entered it. So, but you got the idea. If you didn't, there you go. You would have entered it, so cancel. Yep, there it is. I have my symbol. Control Q, labels. And where's the constraints? The constraints, there you go. Yep, there you go. I already fixed it. Okay, well, there you go. That would do it for this video. Have a good one, everyone.